Odometer rebuild and clock repair. W107. For those of you that have requested more hands-on videos, well, here you go. And just so you guys know, this is eating up a huge amount of time in my day. So those of you that requested this stuff, I hope you're uh, Patreon supporters because, um, you know, I could spend this time doing other things that really need to get done. But, you know, I don't want to look like an idiot and look like I don't care. So what we have here is the instrument cluster from a 560 SL. And we're going to be removing the odometer assembly, which is this thing right here. And um, what we need to start is a Phillips head, flat head, and 6 millimeter nut driver. Now this applies to 126, 1981, 123 turbo diesel wagons only. Um, by the way, if any of you are watching and you have an 81 300 TD, let me know. The, the first thing you do is you remove this little assembly right here that has the low coolant light, the washer fluid light, etc., etc., on, on your 560. Uh, and then you're going to remove the long screw for the dashboard lighting rheostat and set it aside. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the rest of the 6 millimeter screws and we're going to pull this odometer assembly out. Now, you can send these things away and spend hundreds of dollars on this stuff. I mean, hundreds. But you don't really have to. Um, the next part are these four little screws that hold the back of the odometer on. The back, sorry, the back of the, the back case of the speedometer odometer assembly. Now this can be a real challenge for some people because there's a little plastic retainer on the end that keeps this case on but we'll show you how to deal with it but for now we just want to get these four little screws off so we can get access to the site okay so next you've got the odometer out this thing just slips right out but there's notice this little resistor here that's shoved in place this little resistor you have to be very careful with so don't forget that and then you have these four rubber uh, pieces right here that are located uh, on the back of the speedometer so now we're going to remove the case this odometer gear case does not always come out easily I'm actually using a slightly oversized screwdriver thank you and this slightly oversized screwdriver, uh, I was hoping that this would be a, um, that this would be a, uh, a Phillips, because some of these were Phillips and some were not. But nevertheless, you can see the two screws that I'm undoing. Now these screws are notorious for being really hard to get to, which is why you usually have to remove the back cover on a 107, but at a 126, which has a different case, you usually do not have to pull the back cover. Almost every 107 and 126, unless the car has been kept in climate controlled storage, is going to suffer an odometer gear failure. I worked on a 20, 20 something thousand mile car, 29,000 mile 560 SL that had this issue. Now, I really like to buy my odometer gears from odometergears.com. They're a little bit more expensive, but the um, uh, I think the product is better. I know that some of you have probably seen this company, Garagistic, on eBay. And I've had some fitment issues with their gears. So the odometer gears parts are the best in the business. So next, we've got this goofy little thing right here this thing on the side and the way that we're going to deal with this little circuit board first of all we need some pressure behind the board and then we just need to this thing can be such a royal pain to remove you've got these four little 
clips on the side here that are just absolutely embedded. But this is this is why I chose the part from the five. 60. There's a little tiny. Damn it. That's the problem with this thing. So, this is what happens when they're baked in the Florida sun for so many years, but. Even though it got bent, it's still okay. And there are our odometer gears in pieces, coming out in pieces, literally. Because this car has probably sat in a, I think this car sat in a condo in Cocoa Beach. Okay, so let's make sense of this mess. What do we have here? A mess, right? A mess and a huge pain in the butt. First thing we've got to do is we've got to get the remnants of this little gear off. So, you know, if you have a car that's from a hot climate, certain parts can get absolutely cooked. This is not a straightforward, easy odometer gear replacement. But anyway, to get this off, because it's got a little copper shunt in it, you've got to squeeze it with some dikes so that the thing slides off. Now we're going to deal with these shafts. So the first shaft is here. These shafts, the gear slide in and off of the shaft. The, this shaft is okay. It just goes right in here. I'm going to set that there so you can see how it's positioned. While I get out my new odometer gears, the E3 gear, it's got 16 teeth on, on, the, uh, on the end. So we're going to put this aside. Then we've got this little guy. right here, which just pushes on. And this is just going to push on the main shaft. Boy, that thing really went downhill fast, didn't it? Oh well, I'm going to be able to fix it later with some soldering equipment. Okay, now we've got this guy right here. This is a hard plastic gear, this black gear. And this is going to go and just like this. And then we're going to have this gear right here, the E3 gear. Now it's a 48 tooth by 16 tooth gear on like a 560 SL or similar. It's going to push onto the shaft as well. And then last but not least, we've got this gear, the 48 by 12, which is our intermediate gear. And now our cover is back on. So I'm going to set this aside while I reinstall this thing. Um, Mercedes and VDO, I, I think, were kind of evil about the way that they built these odometers. I mean, they really built them to fail. The good news is that most of the gears in the market are, are actually pretty good. By the way, there's a little resistor in here that lives in a teeny tiny little housing. As you'd expect from something that was designed of the life of a fruit fly. And also, as you'd expect, these things have been severed all the way. So we're going to have to, I'm probably just going to have to, oh, nope, I can snap that together. I'm going to have to solder these back together. So we're going to, we're going to do that here in a little bit. Okay, so the next thing you're going to need.